Back here with the acorn squash that we prepared earlier. And what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of water to this. So it don't burn. There you go. Well, that's hot. That's good. Okay. That's a lot of heat there. What I'm gonna do here is, on a Dutch oven, every 15 minutes, you wanna take the base pan, which is your main bottom part of your oven, and you want to rotate it a quarter of the way. The cover, you want to rotate also a quarter of the way, but in the opposite direction. What this does, it gives you an even heat because you're actually baking and you don't want no hot spots. And to prevent the hot spots, you rotate it. Sounds good to me. Simple way. How's, got, the, how's the onion soup doing? Well, we'll go check it now. We got about 450 degrees on this right now. I added extra because of the acorn squash, the hot shell of it itself, and this will help soften it up. Okay, how's, how's this doing? It smells good. It should be almost done. It's been almost an hour. Pair of pliers here. Oh, yeah. It smells good. Stir it up a little bit. Can I see some of the onions? Is it caramelizing? And oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Really nice. Of course, you're only viewing it, but if you were here to smell it, you'll say, "Wow, man, I'm ready to eat now." This is really great. This is a traditional. I said the French brought this over the French onion soup. Uh, it's been a staple in so our family because I married a woman whose family is from Canada. And this is one of their things, but we did it in a Dutch oven. We've been doing it now for a few years. Um, but did always, the pilgrims also, because that was a staple? Well, well they made all kinds of soup. They, they, wild onions? Yeah, they did wild onions, vegetables. and. How many know, pilgrims were there? There was 102 that came over on the Mayflower. The first year was very devastating. They, uh, 52 survived and they lost 50 due to the lack of shelter, the cold, harsh winter, some froze, um, scabies. There was a lot scurvy, of things that happened scurvy. that... And if it wasn't for the Indians that they befriended with, that taught them how to do crops and how to fish, um, guys, they weren't far from the ocean. I, I said about three quarters of a mile. We, we just looked up, it's about three miles that they were um, inland from there. But they how learned long to hunt. They, how long did their feast day last? Uh, I believe it was three days. Yes. It was yeah. a three day feast. Yeah. So you, you could tell how many, you had to have quite a bit of food and to maintain it and everything. What about turkey? Did they have Well, you know, it, traditionally, th this came over the years. Um, they had fish, they had venison. Um, Quail, duck. It said fowl, fall. so fall, fall could have been duck, it could, it could have been turkey. Um, turkey, because it was mashy land, wasn't it? The turkeys were pro probably it, it could have been duck. Uh, yeah, I would say it could have been duck itself. Yeah. Uh, but I know that they did have fish. They had uh, seafood that was caught. A lot and, um, and a lot of vegetables, of course. What type of vegetables? Uh, the squash. They had corn. Uh, anything. They, they even had the onions. Uh, we've read that. They had a cabbage. Uh, they didn't really have stuffing or uh, biscuits or bread because they didn't have whole wheat or grain really to speak of in that area. Um, so the idea of you know them doing a stu bread stuffing is is they never had bread stuffing at those meals. So how much longer do you think it'll be before this is?